right, welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Here to talk about everything in terms of the world of professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside of the ring, backstage curtain drama, and rumors. We also talk about, you know, WWE, AEW, TNA. We talk about all the wrestlers. We talk about, you know, inactive statuses, injury updates, contract negotiations, extensions, and signings. If it makes major news, red, um, if it makes major news headlines in the world of professional wrestling, we talk about it here on the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast on the GSMC Sports Network Monday through Friday. So make sure you guys check us out. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about right quick. We had our WWE SmackDown talk. We also talked about, uh, you know, TNA and Ring of Honor. We also spoke about the Judgment Day breaking up, possible storylines for, um, you know, each member if they decide to break up. Most importantly, what would, uh, you know, uh, what would it look like? What would it look like for all these, uh, you know, for these guys to be on their own? Like, it would, it, I don't know. I, I don't think it would, it would only be good for probably one person, Finn Balor. So it's like one of those things where I feel like, you know, at this point, I guess you got to keep them together. But at the same time, you know, it, you know, keeping something together, you know, could be bad. You know, if you're trying to make it work, I get it. But if you try to push it too much and it just seems like it's forced and it just, you know, loses its authenticity, authenticity. And I'm like, nah, I'm over it. I'm over it. So uh, I don't know. I feel like Judgment Day is, um, you know, uh, coming close to that call. All right, now we're going to talk about WWE SmackDown and and um and Monday Night Raw going to 3 hours. It's been calm. It's been confirmed uh via sources. Um I I you know, I definitely like it. You know, uh, SmackDown has always kind of been a 2-hour show. So it's going to be interesting. You know, obviously SmackDown's going to fill in that void that the USA Network needed. You, they used to have Monday Night Raw, but ever since Raw was uh, you know, basically bought out to Netflix, you know, a lot of potential viewers you know, I, I I would definitely love to see SmackDown move to three hours. I think um I think that'd be great. I feel like you have a lot of talent, a lot of talent, kind of like what my man Curvin Abreu was talking is talking about right now in the chat as well. Where he's talking about where is Shinsuke Nakamura, Giovanni Vinci, Apollo Cruz, Baron Corbin. You know, they see the same people over and over again. Of course, you know, talking about Carmelo Hayes and Andrade fighting each other seven, you know, in seven matches, seven rounds. Like you you know, we're not used to seeing that. In WWE, you know, kind of, you know, kind of seeing the same thing, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, I don't know, just, uh, you know, I can see where that point is being made. But a show movie to three hours could definitely help build storylines, give the, you know, WWE a little bit more time to maybe promote names like Shinsuke Nakamura, names, of course, like Giovanni Vinci, who's had, a, you know, a, a horrific uh, debut, you know, Apollo Crews. You know, I love Apollo Crews. I feel like he'd be an amazing United States champion. But, you know, basically based on, you know, his reputation and everything that's been, you know, that's happened, you know, um, you know, because he was he was he came pretty damn close. He was, you know, he was pretty damn close. I think at one point he was a United States champion. I could be I could be I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I got to fact check that one. But um, then he, you know, then he turned heel. Then he was this, uh, then he was this like Nigerian prince doing this, uh, you know, doing a fake accent. And it was just like, I don't know, you know, was, I don't know. I don't know, you know, but, um, but Baron Corbin, I would love to see Baron Corbin kind of get into that, uh, you know, kind of that bigger spot because um, before Baron Corbin, you know, you know, won the money in the bank, he was being pushed immensely. And then, uh, you know, sources say that he had some disagreements with, you know, WWE creative and Vince McMahon and higher ups. And then after that, they buried him, made him lose his money to bank briefcase cash into like probably one of the most embarrassing moments of his career uh, and WWE money in the bank. So, you know, definitely think he had he has a you know, he has a promising future. Um, but, um, you know, I would, you know, with WWE SmackDown turning to three hours, I feel like that could be only that could be good for uh, Ligado Del Fantasma as well. Santos Escobar, I feel like could be, you know, he could be bigger than the, what WWE is portraying him right now. And also, you know, look at Montez Ford and the Street Profits, you know, the Street Profits right now. You know, it would make sense if they kept him, if they kept them in the tag team division winning championships here and there. They haven't won a championship, I believe, in like two years. And uh, Montez Ford kind of looks like, and no disrespect to D'Angelo Dawkins because I love D'Angelo. I feel like he's an athlete in and himself. But Montez Ford is just so over right now. And you see him inside the ring. This guy's a machine. This guy's a monster, man. This guy could, this guy could definitely hold up a brand. I'm talking WWE championship status. 
I'm de- you know, definitely feel that. Um, it would be interesting to kind of see if WWE decides to push his singles career, you know, as you know, as opposed to uh, you know, breaking up the new day or breaking up uh, you know, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Way. I don't know. It needs at the end of the day, kind of needs to make sense. Uh Apollo Cruz, yeah. Well, Apollo Cruz won the International Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 37. Thank you, uh Kervin. Ker- Definitely appreciate you. You think the final testament? Oh, there, that's another one as well. The final testament, Legado Del Fantasma, and the American made, uh, made, um, you know, are, are ice cold and do not have momentum, you know, and it's, and it's true. And I was talking about this on the podcast, I believe, uh, I think it was, damn it, when I was reviewing Monday Night Raw, I think it was Tuesday, how, um, you know, Chad Gable, you know, when he started his singles wrestling push, I thought he was going to be. Like, kind of like a Kurt Angle. I kind of thought he was going to follow in the footsteps of Kurt Angle. Maybe win the Intercontinental Championship match against Sammy. That would have been pretty badass. And then, uh, you know, you had his fight with the uh, with the uh, Alpha Academy. And then immediately, you know, people were starting to think. It was like, all right, maybe he's going to move on. Or maybe even include with this, uh, you know, with the stable with Tazawa, Otis, and Maxine Dupree. Maybe bring in the Creed Brothers. And, we, you know, we were expecting Gable to team up with the Creed Brothers for probably like a month or two months in. We never really got that. All we saw, all we saw was Chad Gable go heel, you know, disrespect and step on um uh, uh, Alpha Academy, and then then bam, the White Six debut, and then they, you know, they completely, you know, they they killed, you know, they essentially killed Chad Gable, like they killed that momentum, and then Chad Gable, you know, teamed up with the American Made, and everybody was like, yes, you know, and Ivy Nile, and, and all the fans were so happy. I was happy. I was like, all right, cool, it's gonna be badass. It's gonna be good for Chad Gable, and then the White Six kind of, you know, killed their push. You know, because, you know, they were you kind of had these two factions going at it. You know, wh- which one's going to get the push? Who- who's going to win? Who's going to look, uh, you know, who's going to look like they have a future in WWE? Obviously, WWE has invested so much time in promoting this uh, Bo Dallas, uh, Uncle Howdy thing, which is which is great. And it could be great. Uh, but a lot of, you know, sources, a lot of, you know, wrestling news media feels like that. The Wyatt Six are ultimately kind of under, you know, kind of under performing. You know, the, it seems like it was overhyped, you know. Quite a bit. Um, Legato Fant- Del Fantasma, I definitely want to see them do. I definitely want to see them do better. The Final Testament is another one that, you know, you saw on Monday Night Raw, you know, during The Miz talking with uh, Karrion Cross. You saw the White Six emblem. Uh, I want to see the, the Miz, you know, seek out help against the White Six. Uh, with the Final Testament, seems like that storyline would make the most sense uh, because I would hate to see. You know, a talented superstar like uh, like Karrion Cross. I would hate to see, you know, uh, I dig AOP. I ultimately thought once when AOP went back to NXT to challenge Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the NXT tag team titles. I felt like they were going to win. I felt like the Final Testament would have found a home in NXT. But recently in an interview, and I actually covered it yesterday, Karrion Cross claimed that he will not go back to NXT. He will not. He's a two-time NXT champion, and he's not going to go back down to NXT. Not like it's a, you know, not like for bad reasons. He doesn't want to go down there because he doesn't want to take any opportunities away from all these young rising stars. He ultimately feels like it's for them. Um, so as in terms of the final testament, it, it you know, that's such a promising start. You know, such a promising start. But then at the same time, like I said, then you saw the wide six kind of roll in. And now you have two, you know, you, you know, screwed up, you know, manipulative, sick, sadistic, dark, ominous WWE two factions on the same show. Like, you know, at this point, it's like, you know, it's like, why? Uh, but overall, I, you know, I definitely agree with your take. I feel like, uh, you know, they have no momentum whatsoever. Uh, obviously, with the world tag team titles around the waist of McDonough and Finn Balor, obviously that doesn't help at all. It would be awesome to kind of see uh, American Made defeat uh, the Judgment Day for those titles, and just you know, this tag team division needs to be bigger. You know what I mean? Uh, this, it needs to be better. It needs to be better. I don't know. It's um, you know, definitely crazy. A lot of talent. You know, once like you know, talking about each show going to three hours, seeming like it's going to solve a lot of these problems, and hopefully they do. Hopefully they do because there's a lot of you know unrepresented talent in the in the in the heavyweight, in the in the tag team, in the women's division. You know, it just needs to be. You know, the love needs to spread out a little bit more. And as of right now, kind of alluding to your point that um, it seems like the same people over and over again seem to be, you know, 
on the main stage seem to be the focus of what WWE, you know what I mean? So um, I don't know. Uh, maybe this three hour show would mean that there's a lot of people who could possibly become breakout stars like uh, Carmelo Hayes, maybe like Santos Escobar on SmackDown and on Raw. Maybe have Chad Gable finally get a push uh, as the leader of the American Maid, maybe go after the Intercontinental Championship once again. But ultimately, I feel like this is good. I feel like this is good. I really feel like there could be, you know, no negative aspects in terms of this. I know that WWE live events are going to be cut down by uh, well more than half. So, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, superstars are going to give it all they have on the main show, um, you know, kind of making Raw and SmackDown, you know, bigger, better, and, uh, you know, stronger than ever. So, you know, definitely love that WWE is doing this. It's about time. Obviously, you know, for uh, for a lot of reasons, financial reasons, like ad advertising revenue, you know, it, it's great, you know, but, you know, all in all, I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be great. It has to be great. At this point, it really does. So, um, you know, definitely looking forward to seeing what a three hour WWE Smackdown show looks like. All right, guys. So, hey, do not go anywhere. We're going to talk about my fifth and final segment. We're going to talk about some of the hottest news, all the breaking news in terms of the professional wrestling world uh, with my wrestling news roundup. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 